by the beard of Zeus. Welcome back to the Seek Strength YouTube channel. Today's is on caffeine powder versus just straight up good old fashioned black tar coffee. So if you're new to the channel, every single Monday we do a paper review on different aspects related to sports science, sports performance, hypertrophy, anything that's related to the human body trying to do stuff better. We look at papers on it. So if you haven't seen an episode before, go check out the previous episodes once you finish watching this one. So this week's episode comes from the University of North Carolina. It is titled Effects of Coffee and Caffeine and Hydrogen on Strength and Sprint performance so as i said it's coming from the university of north carolina so basically the premise of the study is pretty simple we had a group of 56 males they had two sessions in the sports science laboratory so what they did was essentially the first one was they had them first do their baseline testing so what they tested was their 1rm in the leg press and bench press and then reps to fatigue or reps to failure at 80 percent then they moved on to repeated sprints on a stationary bike and they measured peak power and total work output so they came in for testing on the first day did not take any supplementation they were refrained from using any creatine beta alanine any other supplements like that and they refrained from using caffeine for a couple of days prior to the testing they got their baseline measurements and then at least two days later came back to the laboratory and then they either got they were either placed in one of three groups so it was either placebo group which got neither then a caffeine group which was 300 milligrams of powdered caffeine and then a coffee group with similar match for caffeine of 300 milligrams and then they simply repeated the testing above so as before and then the results are analyzed okay so then on to the results uh what was the difference between the coffee group and the caffeine supplement group well in terms of strength numbers to start off with there was significant increases for all groups right so placebo group coffee group and caffeine powder group all had significant increases from the baseline testing to the uh, post testing or the actual testing day we'll probably talk about that a bit more in the discussion as to why that will be or why you might expect to see that we saw for bench press 1rm and bench press reps of fatigue there was no real difference they all had significant increases and there was no interaction between the groups so kind of no significant difference between the caffeine group and the powdered caffeine group we saw in the leg press one that the caffeine group actually did better so they were significantly better than the powdered caffeine group and the placebo group that's something that we have to talk about earlier or later on and i know Owen is going to want to talk about that later on in terms of where we draw significance from when we look at like statistical analyses but the baseline facts are of for the strength numbers anyway is that it doesn't really matter where you get your caffeine from they all appear to work in terms of the sprint performance then so there's a few things they're looking at here they're looking at like actual sprint performance like sprint time they also looked at peak power so peak power for the placebo group was slightly decreased uh that's kind of to be expected if you've absolute maximal outputs and then less than two days later you're testing sprinting again it may be expected that you'll have lesser outputs in terms of like peak power outputs we do see a, a kind of crossover here and where powdered caffeine appeared to be better in one of the sprinting events than cough then like just coffee on its own but it's important to note that these differences are very very small right so on a whole caffeine did work and on a whole for most of the sprint testing it didn't really matter whether we got that caffeine from coffee or we got it from some sort of caffeine supplement so i just kind of want to touch on two areas related to the study that they had as part of that study but also as a broader topic of you know research review and literature review uh, so we do see a culture and obviously we're part of that culture where people like to reference studies uh, often these people will be for want of a better word uh, unqualified unskilled and not able to actually read studies uh, for example one of the biggest podcasts in the world joe rogan had a uh, a doc tour on recently talking about how many studies he reads a week and he mentioned in this, uh, he said some ridiculous number. He said something like 50 studies a week or whatever, or 100 studies, something crazy like that. And he referenced all these studies he read for his book. And Joe was like, you read all those studies? And he was like, well, I read the, the abstract. And in the words he said was, I don't read the gobbledygook in the middle. And my God, the gobbledygook is the part that matters for all of this. 
So, for example, if you were to read the abstracts of every study, you've no idea of the quality of the subjects, what they actually did. So, if you were to read this one, you'd probably think, like Fix mentioned, that the caffeine doesn't work, you know, but that wasn't the purpose of the study. So, sometimes we get studies that are simply there to reinforce previous studies. So, a big thing in the scientific community that didn't really get transferred over to sports science is that repetition of literature is very, very important. So, people need to reproduce actual studies for before we really make them valid so we before we see a big consensus before we take things seriously so too often in sports science we get one study and people will be kind of like okay so that's that's it we just did it once they had five people and it worked so we're going to run with hmb or beta analine or whatever it is you know so it's very very important to see repetition of studies these people slightly altered they went for a different approach but a similar concept and i think that's very very useful so sometimes when people see these studies or watch them or videos you see stuff like oh so nothing happened so what was the point of the study is is this even useful but it's incredibly useful it's the context you put on the results not the actual results you get i think are very very important so bear that in mind whenever you're watching these or in fact in a broader sense when you're watching anyone else talk about studies uh james smith was talking about this recently about the temperature of water uh in for recovery and i actually agree with what he was saying but someone called him out in the comments saying well i can cherry pick other studies and i think it's important that you know don't run before you can walk you know make sure you're actually understanding what it is you're reading and that's why we're here because we don't know either so then the second part of this then is something that's kind of changing in sports science journals and sports and strength and conditioning journals and you've talked about is kind of the, the use of p-values or like what is statistically significant you know so a result might not be significant in the realms of standard deviation or maths but out here in the trenches bro two kilos is pretty significant so if we if we look at these studies right so we see from the pre and post group so let's take the bench press 1rm so pre the average was 93 kilos standard deviation or plus or minus uh 18 and a half kilos so we went from 93 post group 1rm bench went to 94.7 so mathematically this is this is like this is, doesn't really is this really showing us anything useful but as i said to fitz if when I snatched 155 a few months ago, if someone said two days time, if you come back and you do this, you'll get 157 and that 0.7. I fucking would have been straight in there ingesting whatever it is they told me it was, you know. So when we look at things like this, it's always important to, again, read that gobbledygook in the middle and pay attention to what's being in there and be able to put context on it. So experience is very, very important with these two. The last thing then is kind of touching on the, the subject of caffeine versus powdered caffeine and so you're like Fitz kind of mentioned on the ability to control dosing probably in our experience and our own personal terms and I think most people agree it is coffee is the preferable method to deliver caffeine and it's this is useful to see and this is kind of gratifying to see that there's no real performance benefit because I know a lot of people watching this would be are looking for an edge or looking for that 0.1% or 0.5% or whatever it is that's a little bit better that'll make a better quality session because you know all these add up. So when we look at things like caffeine powder versus coffee, a lot of people might look at this and say, well, look, I like my coffee, but if caffeine powder is better, I'll go for it. So it's, it's useful to see that there is basically no meaningful difference so one reason there's a couple of reasons maybe there's maybe a couple of reasons you might prefer coffee versus caffeine powder so coffee has a lot of extraneous benefits not associated with caffeine but the actual coffee bean itself so the the organic plant matter now depending on which side of the carnivore or vegan line you're falling on you may or may not agree with some of those but there's a lot of longitudinal studies on the long-term benefits so reducing all-cause mortality cardiovascular benefits uh, liver benefits cancer reduction risk of cancer and then there's kind of the one of the bigger ones which is potentially due to the polyphenols and caffeine is a better insulin response a better glucose control so there's a lot of reasons why you might prefer caffeine but there's also a couple of reasons why you might prefer caffeine powder but you prefer your caffeine coming from coffee most of these studies that are look at you know long-term ingestion of coffee usually the negative side effects either come if you're pregnant when you're watching this you probably know if you're pregnant and then the other ones come from the ba the excess consumption of caffeine rather than the consumption of coffee beans themselves so an interesting study pretty thought-provoking again coffee is probably the most widely used drug and just to close this out you know what i really hate when people say yeah but caffeine's a drug and you're like i know that's why i'm using it
on to the discussion. So next, in terms of caffeine powder versus a coffee, like just a normal cup of coffee, there are definitely some advantages and disadvantages. A clear one to start off with is on the dosaging, right? So in this study, the dosaging might be considered quite low for a strength outcome from caffeine. Uh, it was between three and six. I think it was 300 milligrams uh, flat across the line. So usually you want to have that uh, increased or decreased for body weight. When we take a powdered caffeine source, it's very, very easy to bump my dosages up or it's very easy to drop my dosages down. I think people tend to overdo the dosages of powdered caffeine quite a lot. I definitely know for people I've coached and I'm currently coaching, they have ramped up their caffeine intake hugely um, to the point of it being maladaptive and to the point of them being so drastically desensitized to caffeine that it no longer has an ergogenic effect. So I would say most of the time for, in terms of an athlete looking for the ergogenic effect of caffeine, coffee is a very, very good kind of pathway for them to get it in. The dosaging tends to be fairly consistent. So if they're getting it from the same like sources, if it's like ground coffee, they make it a French press, you know enough how much you put in each day, you know how many scoops of instant coffee you use each day, you know how many cups of coffee you have throughout the day before you go training. All of these things make dosaging quite easy, but they stop you from kind of overindulging or from ramping up your caffeine levels too much to the point whereby you no longer get an ergogenic effect. My second point then will be on this study design right so people could make the mistake of looking at this study and saying caffeine doesn't work caffeine works like in the the eternal words of Roderick Chavez like the drugs work everyone knows they work uh caffeine was a banned substance for a long time so if you're an Olympic athlete and you got tested you had caffeine in your system you would get a ban for it Caffeine is definitely a substance that enhances performance, it enhances performance across both aerobic and anaerobic uh, working capacities. It is hugely beneficial, particularly in the two areas we look at here, sprint performance and strength performance. What we're looking at in these studies when you see like, okay, both groups increased or placebo groups increased and the caffeine groups increased, the study isn't designed to see whether caffeine works or not. We know caffeine works. The study is designed to look at the difference between taking caffeine in a powdered form and taking caffeine in a cup of coffee form. So that is important to know because I think people can like look at studies similar to this where they're like they look at a divergent path and they'll say, okay, um, hill sprints work. When the study wasn't looking at hill sprints work, the study was looking at the difference between hill sprints and sled sprints and their effect on maximal speed outcomes. So it is important when you look at studies along these lines that you look at what the actual design is there to find out. If I was to look at this study from the outside, not knowing what they were actually looking to find out, you could easily come to the conclusion that, okay, caffeine isn't that effective at increasing performance. But caffeine is, it's incredibly effective. The last point then will be on why they thought this study should be done, right? So obviously if we're putting people through physical testing, they're taking samples, they're getting them to come in multiple times, ethically you need a good reason to want this, to run a study like this. Well, there's certain things in coffee that they thought would have a an increased efficacy of releasing that caffeine or would kind of have a synergistic effect with the caffeine right so chlorogenic acids are something that is exist in caffeine in other studies they found that this these chlorogenic acids when combined with caffeine have a harmonious effect so they kind of both of them bring each other up and they increase the effectiveness of both compounds this didn't happen here or it appeared to have not happened which is quite interesting. They postulate that it could just be a kind of high intensity exercise realms that these uh, effects occur, but it didn't happen here. So before we go, there's a little company in Scotland, two brothers run the company. So they are pretty, pretty early in their company's career and they contacted us recently, not so long ago, about sponsoring an episode of the YouTube or the podcast. Uh, so they're a company called Power Press Coffee. They're athletes. Um, the two boys are pretty sound. We really like them. They contacted us 
So we have a discount code for them, Powerpress Coffee. It's Sika15, S-I-K-A-15 for a discount, 15% off. Um, this is the only time we'll be doing this on this episode, so this is the only time we'll be promoting the lads. So it would help them a lot if you, if you could go and purchase a little bit of coffee. It's very, very nice coffee. The sharpest is what I like. I am emotionally attached to that coffee because the day I snatched 115, I drank their coffee. So now in my head, I forever have to drink their coffee uh, as weightlifter superstition goes. So just want to say we like helping people when they contact us. They seem really nice. Um, We're not getting paid by them. Uh, We don't get any money from it. It's something they're a smaller business and they reached out to us. And we like the cut of their jib. So seek a 15 for a little discount on some very, very nice coffee. I know a lot of you drink coffee. um, So... It looks good for everyone involved if you buy some.